So one side, when we are giving you the independence to make your own decision, the other side, we also enforce the concept of punishment if that decision goes wrong. Accountability is a very important factor which raises the confidence, which raises the trust among the people. The citizens are able to experience that they get an instant feedback, they get an instant acknowledgement of what is happening around. Good morning and welcome to the second session, Chapter 2, Unit 3, Fourth Semester BCA, Good Governance in India, where we're going to talk about ethics and accountability in governance. When we talk about this word accountability, it is more about the process, about the norms of making a decision which is answerable. So whenever I say accountability, that means the decision owner is responsible for whatever decision that he makes. Now, this is very important for all of us. Why? Because whenever we talk about decision making, it's very important to see that person is able to gain certain important aspects about what decision he is taking. The recent emphasis on revolutionized democracy, seeking increased accountability from the government has made us Think about the focus in terms of why governance is needed and what is its importance. Today, when the government makes a decision and just passes it on to the people, the question that arises from the citizen is that if that decision fails, if it is not able to give the desired results, whom should I go and question? Whom should I go and ask this entire matter? So that is where accountability plays a very, very important role in the good governance factor altogether. Now, accountability mechanisms in function of state has been engaging the attention of the civil society. Why? Because everybody from the academicians, from the experts, research, everybody wants to understand the importance of accountability, which is playing a very big role today in terms of making you understand how the decision is going to be impacted. Now, the advantages of accountability in governance, as we speak about, the first thing is the democratic governance. That is the accountabilities of the citizen, which is a fundamental pr principle of democratic citizen. Now, whenever we talk about it, that means to say that you are independent, you are a part of the system, which is allowing you to include everybody when the decision is made. Now, you cannot be taking a decision in isolation. You will not be given the option of allowing yourself to be on the first in command and take decision on behalf of others. You need to include every citizen, every person who is a part of the society. So that now what happens is the hierarchy is also included. Everybody is able to understand how the society is working and this might come out of the legal requirements more from the moral and ethical framework altogether. Now, when we talk about the answerability, we also talk about accountability, which is justifying the enforcement component altogether, how things are happening, what are all the factors that is going on. We also talk about the remedial measures that have been provided. Now, the remedial measures include punishment in case of deviations from the norms and the public confidence which improves because there is accountability. So one side, when we are giving you the independence to make your own decision, the other side, we also enforce the concept of punishment if that decision goes wrong. So that is why this is very, very important. Now, public confidence levels will also go up when the accountability rises in terms of decision making followed by the stakeholders stakeholders here means that the bodies that are part of the decision making committee so whenever we talk about the legislature the judiciary 
and the executive all of them become a part of the decision making process so the objectivity here is very very clear where we talk about finance or we are going to talk about the moral standards or we're going to talk about administrative or any other professional decision everybody will become a part of the system citizens as electorate first and foremost thing is that the stakeholders in any case have to be the citizens it has to be an elaborate process where you seek accountability of the elected representatives, which is very, very important. Citizens are also the taxpayers. Yes, they should be given that right. Why? Because when they are paying tax, they expect the organization to come back and give them whatever they need. So today, when the government collects tax from the citizens, the citizens will also expect that they are getting their funds fundamental needs, their requirements completed. If the government is not able to stand by the words, then automatically the trust, the image of the government will go down. So accountability is a very important factor which raises the confidence, which raises the trust among the people. Moving forward, when we talk about the accountability, we also talk about the vision, empowerment and making accountability an obligation. Now, the vision of the government is about participation. The vision of the government is to see that every person in this country becomes a part of the decision making. Now, that is not practically possible. Why? Because of the numbers one side. The other thing is that whether everybody will start understanding the administrative aspect, the long term future of a country. But nevertheless, whenever a scheme is being planned, it has been framed altogether. The scheme has to be created in such a way that everybody understands the government, everybody understands the process of taking it forward. So that is the reason I would say that the vision of the government is more about indicating governments from all level and everybody participating into it. Now, empowering the stakeholders, we are giving the responsibility, we are giving the authority in terms of taking up the decision. We tell the people very clearly that if you have the right to take a decision, please go ahead and do it. We also say to the people that they are obligated in terms of making that decision. They have the power, they have the right to take decision and meet the expectations of the stakeholder. Following which, when we are talking about accountability being an obligation, we mean to say that this gives an account of the actions that have been taken up by the people in our country. So whenever somebody is making decision, Earlier, accountability was not found in the system, but today we have made accountability a part and parcel of the system. Why? Because we feel that accountability will actually help people to understand how the system works. Accountability will create a transparency in the system. It will go ahead and tell people who is making the decision, what is the need for that decision and what is the implication of the decision in the long run. Followed by which, now we also talk about the Right to Information Act and the digitization of the various services that are coming into picture. Now with the advent of the RTI in the year 2005, this has introduced a huge amount of transparency, focus and the system of knowing things for the people. So today what happens here is that nobody can go back and say that I am in the dark, I am left in lurch. They can go ahead, they can find out what is happening in the government. They can also find out what exactly is the system trying to bring in and how that system is going to work in terms of the conditions that have been put. Now, if I want to know about the waterworks department or about the land corporation or I want to know about electricity department, I have the rights to gather information which is publicly available. So accountability is becoming even more important in the coming days and the digitization as we are talking about digital India altogether the vision that we have been speaking about this provides 
an insight into everyday activity of each and every department. So now what happens is that the citizen is able to gain attraction, he is able to go forward, he is able to understand what is the trail of activities that is going on. Now, the citizen's charter, that is what we had created, will also spell out the responsibilities of various agencies and government that's coming down. We are laying down the timelines rendering to specific services that have been talked about. We are also making them accountable for to the citizens. For example, the citizen's charter, when we talk about the central board of direct taxes, where we are seeing that there is a inter-service alia uh, duties that are happening where you are paying the taxes, you are also getting your refund, the addressal of grievances are happening. So somewhere you are able to see that the government is becoming more proactive in terms of helping the citizens, in terms of understanding the needs and creating a communication pattern here. Earlier, it was a one-way methodology. The citizen used to go to a government office, wait for hours together until he gets the reply. But today, with the advent of online, with the advent of entire system getting digital altogether, the citizens are able to experience that they get an instant feedback, they get an instant acknowledgement of what is happening around. So that's where accountability and citizens charter are coming forward as a very big boon to the service to the country. Followed by the vigilance factor that is coming into accountability. Now, what is the concept of vigilance that we need to look about, that we need to talk here? Vigilance is actually a monitoring exercise that is needed in every single institution in our country. Why do we need to be vigilant? Why do we need to bring in this function? It's because we want to see that the decision that is being taken is implemented from end to end. There needs to be a strong process in place with checks each and every activity, each and every step, whether the process is implemented or not. So whenever we look into this vigilance, we have a set of prescribed norms. We have a set of standards which is being written down and that has to be followed by the government official. So whenever a citizen or a government official tries to break the rule, tries to attempt something which is outside, which is outside the purview of the system, outside the, the organization standards altogether, then there is a question of vigilance that comes into picture. Nowadays, when we see the abuse of power, when we see the illegal activities like bribery and corruption erupting in the society, everybody wants to know how is that possible. Now, whenever you are trying to implement a shortcut in the society, automatically accountability takes a backseat which we do not want. So the model has to ensure in such a way that whatever services that are being provided by government organization, that has to have a flow in terms of the standards. So every citizen must follow that activity and the activity has to be recorded. It has to be given the necessary result. Now, for example, if I go to a government office, for my tax records or for my land records. Automatically, if there is going to be a bribery through which I can bribe some officials and get my tax record or land record done as far as possible, then the system gets completely corrupted. People lose trust over that department and accountability goes for a toss. So that's where we need to have the checks and balance. We need to have a department called as the vigilance department, which will look into all these aspects and let know the people if there are deviations in the process. Moment a deviation is being found, they raise the red flag, they go to that concerned department, identify the corrupt people, they are suspended, they are punished, and the citizens are given their due course of action. So that's why I would say that the framework of accountability includes vigilance, which is very, very important. And that has to be kept in mind that we need to be alert about each and every service that the government is undertaking.
followed by the horizontal accountability which means to say that the flow of accountability from one department to another department which includes multiple people see today when you talk about judiciary or when you talk about the accounting department the income tax department or any other department they're all interlinked so one department will ensure the smooth flow of services that has been activated, that has been followed everywhere and that has to be having all kind of activities that are to be kept. Now at times when you start feeling about this factor that why is that we are not able to follow the standards, why is that the accountability is not being questioned, that is the point at which external agencies come into picture to check the regularity. In order to make this idea simple for you, moment you see that there are government agencies which become corrupt, which become completely on the bribery mode. Then you have external investigation agencies like CBI or the Enforcement Directorate, the Vigilance Commission. All those people will start getting into picture. They start mandatorily looking into the book of records, accounts and find out what has gone wrong and why the people are affected. The financial accountability as we were talking about this is a very very important aspect so whenever we talk about the financial aspect of any of the government thing each and everything that has been spoken about has to be a part of the system each and everything has to be taken into account the article that is 148 as per the CAG Council of India has to be found out the controller and auditor general has to ensure that the accountability is recorded the accountability is taken into the reasons of how it is being done and every expenditure that is incurred in terms of doing some activity has to be recorded very very clearly. Now, the audit also has to be happening on the regular basis so that people are able to know how the system is being done, who is doing it and who ensures in terms of the delivery of the project. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that all the facts and figures that have been spoken about in terms of the governance and accountability would help you both in terms of theory and in the practical walk of life. In the upcoming session, we would be talking about the challenges in good governance. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.